Next, we have member statements. And I recognize the member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. And let me start by welcoming you and all members of this esteemed House back to the Legislature for our fall session. And I'd like to extend a, a special welcome to our newest member from the Bay of Quinte. Although most of us have been at Queen's Park for committee meetings and other activities over the past few months, many times, as I came back in today, I was reminded of the awe I first experienced when entering this assembly two years ago. It is a profound recognition of the tremendous responsibility entrusted to us by the people. I'm honoured to participate in the government's agenda to continue building Ontario for its residents. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we have created the conditions for hundreds of thousands of new jobs to be added to Ontario's economy, bringing prosperity to so many people. We are committed to investing in our health care and our education systems to meet the needs of our communities while also strengthening our infrastructure and the economy to ensure that these services remain resilient and to secure a brighter future for everyone. As we work to build a better Ontario over the coming months, I urge all members to remember that we all want to improve this province, and we can achieve this more effectively by working cooperatively and collegially in these hallowed halls. Once again, welcome back, Mr. Speaker, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you very much. The 40 Lions Affordable Housing Crisis. In September, I attended a fundraising launch for the new Niagara Lions Club Doug Douglas Heights Senior Residence Project in Fort Erie. The Lions and other volunteers have come together to help solve the affordability housing crisis facing our seniors. I want to thank the incredible team of volunteers that have made up this committee and have done so much work getting this project up and running. The proposed new nine-story, 62-unit, independent living apartment would provide housing for our seniors, including those who are on a waiting list for over 10 years. 45% of 40 years' population is 55 years and older, which will grow to 50% by 2041. Nearly 3,000 households in Fort Erie are 65 years and older and considered low income. They need to raise $1.5 million to qualify for federal funding. This provincial government has spent $26.7 million on partisan ads, election ads, and half a billion on a private spa in Toronto. What this government should be doing is investing in our seniors and in affordable housing. There is nothing more important than ensuring seniors, the people that build our province, have the housing they need and, quite frankly, Speaker, what they deserve. I'm calling on the Premier and the minister to do the right thing, work together, invest in this crucial project for Fort Erie, Niagara, and for all our seniors in the province of Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Leeds, Granville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. Thanks, Speaker. Speaker, it's a Small Business Week. It's a time to uh, celebrate the hardworking men and women who operate Ontario's over 400,000 small businesses. I'm sending my heartfelt appreciation to the entrepreneurs in Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes, uh, whose businesses are the heart of our small towns and villages. This summer, I was proud to showcase many of these amazing local businesses with members of our government's cabinet. From the Nut Free Gourmet Bakery with Minister Thompson, to visiting dozens of vendors on the Brockville Farmers Market with Minister Flack, or Allen Brown's Clothiers, Thousand Islands Brewing, Tory Deschamps Hair Studio, and Thousand Islands Pizzeria with Minister Beth and Falvey. And DeVries Power and Utility Solutions and 401 Electric with Minister Pacini and Premier Ford. These businesses had a chance to speak directly to our government about how we can ensure to continue to support them. I also want to recognize our local chambers of commerce, uh, who are the very important voice of businesses in our community. 
I want it, it was great for me to celebrate with two of our chambers for their awards of excellence, the Thousand Islands Gananoque Chamber and the Brockville District Chamber of Commerce, and to also co-host a breakfast with MP Michael Barrett, our local MP, uh, co-sponsored by both the South Grenville and the North Grenville Chamber of Commerce. Speaker, this week and every week, I encourage all of us to get out and support our local small businesses and thank them because they're the backbone of our communities. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member from Mishkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est avec une grande Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm very sad because I'm commemorating the death of a member of the Franco-Ontarian uh, community, Mrs. Ellen Cote. She spent her life in order to promote the interest of our community and to try to promote the Franco-Ontarian culture. She has created the social enterprise in our uh, riding. She has helped people and she has promoted sustainable development. I would like to request a moment of silence in order to remember what Helen Cote has done. Mr. Speaker, I would like to request a moment of silence for all the length of the member statement today. The member for Hishkikawak, James Bay, is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to have a moment's silence. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members will please take their seats. <laughs> member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. It's great to be back in the legislature this morning. Over the past few months, I've had the opportunity to attend numerous community events, celebrations, and opportunity to connect with residents. Um, these events remind us of the unique tapestry that make our province so vibrant and so special. And to the many inspiring individuals that volunteer their time, thank you for your commitment of making Ontario such a great place to be. Speaker, under Premier Ford's leadership, our government has made it clear that Brampton will never again be left behind. And I'm so pleased to share that Brampton's new Toronto Metropolitan School of Medicine is set to open its doors next year in September of 2025. A beginning of a new chapter, graduating medical experts right here in our great city of Brampton. Speaker, our commitment doesn't end there. We're powering forward as we get ready to build, build and begin construction on critical infrastructure investments such as Brampton's second hospital and the much anticipated Highway 413, a corridor that's going to alleviate traffic and save drivers up to an hour uh, from work to home every day, letting them spend more time with their families and less time stuck, at, uh, stuck in gridlock, Speaker. Speaker, as our fall parliamentary session begins, I'm excited to be back in the legislature to debate important bills and continue working on our mandate of making Ontario a powerhouse for generations to come. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's really wonderful to be back in this House and to start working on the issues that people care about most in this province. And the Ontario NDP, in this session, we're going to be focused on housing, health care, education and community safety. And I want to start with housing. This government, this Conservative government, inherited a uh, crisis of 21,000 homeless people in this province from the Liberal government. They've managed to increase that to 234,000 people who are homeless across this province. 
In my own riding, we've got tent encampments in Clarence Square, Little Norway, in parks and under the gardener. And every community that I visit in this province has tent encampments, and that is the, that is the result of the policies pursued by this government. It is a human tragedy. There are 2,500 people per year who die from the opioid crisis, which is part of this homelessness crisis. 40% of the people who are homeless have disabilities, mental illness, or, or addictions. We, and the impact of these tent encampments on the communities, on businesses, it makes people feel unsafe in their communities. It means people don't have access to their public space. So in the last session, I introduced a bill to, to build 250,000 units of non-market housing, including co-ops, social housing, and supportive housing. I'm going to be reintroducing that. We need to get the solution. We know how to solve the homelessness and housing crisis. Ignoring it hasn't worked. We need to build housing. We need to build non-market housing to bring an end to homelessness and to build affordable housing so everyone in this province has a home they can afford. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Milton. Thank you, Speaker. Exactly a month ago yesterday, one of the constituents in my riding, who I had crossed paths with many times, tragically died in a car accident. A pickup truck was driving on Jerry Road in my riding at a very high speed when it struck several vehicles, crossed the median, flipped over, and struck a vehicle driven by Mohammed Salim, who was rushed to the hospital, but despite the best efforts to save him, succumbed to his injuries. At his funeral, several attendees came up and asked me to raise uh, the issue of road safety in the parliament. So it's very timely that it just so happens that Bill 97, the second reading, is today, the Safer, Communities, Safer Roads and Communities Act. One silver lining is that the Milton community came together and quickly raised $124,000 to help the Salim family. And I know that the bill won't bring Mohammed back, but I'm confident, and I have no doubt in my mind that the act will save lives in the future. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Welcome back to work. Uh, six weeks late, six weeks of new ministers and parliamentary assistants with nice pay raises, not having to face the order. The member will take a seat. The House will come to order. I didn't hear anything unparliamentary about what the member said. Apologize to the member for interrupting him. Order. Order. Minister for Red Tape Reduction will come to order. The member for Kingston the Islands has the floor. Six weeks, six weeks of new ministers and parliamentary assistants with nice pay raises, not having to face the legislature and answer questions. Not answering questions from people who still don't have a family doctor or give up after waiting hours in emergency if it's even open. Not answering questions from people who can't afford rent increases or small landlords ruined by delays at the landlord and tenant board. Not answering questions from first responders and healthcare workers injured by increased violence or downtown businesses and construction workers in my riding who live and work amongst the victims of addictions, mental health and the homelessness crisis. Not answering questions about kids without school buses in Renfrew County and what's going to happen in two years when contracts expire for the tri-board buses in Kingston and the islands. Not answering questions about special ed teachers not spending time on special ed because they have to cover for educational assistance. Not answering questions from a family doctor and an engineer in my riding waiting for childcare so that they can go to work. Not answering questions about this Premier's obsession with beer, buying boats and burrowing under the 401. This government is not listening to the people and not making sure that the people's priorities are the government's priorities. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Oxford. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there was an accident at my neighbor's farm in Oxford a few days ago that was a stark reminder that the farm's safety is vitally important. This time of year, farmers are working long days and they're at the mercy of weather. Harvest time is limited and they have got to get it done. 
This is when mistakes can happen. It can cost someone a limb or their life. Agriculture Safety Week may be in March, but it's important to put farm safety front and center every day. Farm safety is about knowing what to do to avoid accidents and injuries any time you're working with equipment and livestock. That means keeping equipment fixed up and up to date, taking a break when you're tired and not cutting corners when you're in a rush. When working, shut down equipment before making adjustments and clearing a blockage. Keep their safety guards in place and don't let kids play around work sites or near equipment. Have a first aid kit and emergency contact numbers handy and take a charged phone with you when you head out. For mental health support, the Far Farmers Wellness Initiative is available to farmers and their families and workers anytime at 1-866-267-6255. Our farmers are working diligently to provide food for our tables, Mr. Speaker, and it's vital that we support their safety every day. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have more great news from Essex County. We have a joint task force in Essex County. It's a joint task force between the LaSalle Police Department and the Windsor Police Department. It's called the Offender Management Unit, and their job is to track and arrest people who are violent offenders who have violated their bail conditions. In less than eight months, officers have apprehended 42 offenders on a total of 72 charges. These individuals were arrested and initially charged and or convicted with serious crimes, including murder, attempted murder, human trafficking, sexual assault, and aggravated assault. Seven of these offenders were on bail for charges involving intimate partner violence. Projects like these are made possible through grants from the Government of Ontario as part of the provincial government's strategy to fix a bail system that's been left broken by the federal Liberal government. And I don't know how much longer we can afford to keep fixing the Liberal problems, but I'm proud to be part of a government that is fighting intimate partner violence and even more proud to support our fantastic police officers who work tirelessly to keep our communities safe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.